Drama is afoot. Yes, we have to revisit, do a follow-up concerning the Grid Studio Nintendo 64 controller that was framed. It's not in the frame any longer. Now, they sent me an email response that prompted this video. So we're gonna go over this email in a second and then look at some things here, give you guys some of my thoughts. But if you haven't watched that video yet, uh, I definitely recommend going back and watching it. It's a fairly short one uh, to see what had happened and you know what prompted this email, I guess. But essentially, you know, I unboxed this without planning the video. Uh, I didn't know 100% what it was. It was kind of a mystery box. I thought it was a grid studio frame, and that's what it turned out to be. The shipping label, it didn't have the company name on it. It just had somebody's name as the shipper. I don't remember. It was like Jason something. Uh, so it wasn't 100%. It was like, okay, let's just dive into this and see what we got, right? So not pre-planned. And I understand, you know, my take and opinions on things isn't always going to be the same as everybody's, and that's okay. Uh, I just wasn't very thrilled with the presentation here for numerous reasons, right? This thing's $230. It was in a frame, okay? Uh, but the presentation, I mean, they could have done quite a bit more with this, in my opinion. But the quality, the condition of the controller, the actual housing, doesn't look presentable to me. I don't know how well that comes out on camera, but man, there is hand butt cheese grime in between all the crevices. There's stains. There's gunk. Inside the buttons, there's a lot of nastiness. I mean, there's like a whole like like biome of, of things living on this controller. I really don't think it was cleaned at all. I can understand some scuffs and scratches, you know, slightly. Uh, you know, people are either against this kind of thing or they're fine with it. And either, either way you sit, you know, that's okay. But I, I understand, you know, using a less than desirable controller may be more, you know, acceptable to people, but have it presentable, cleaned up that kind of thing. You know, if it was a controller that didn't work before, whatever the case may be. Uh, but for the, the money that you're spending on something like that, it's just ridiculous. But okay, you may see we have some supplies over here. We'll get into that in a second. But this email, let's go over it. So this came through late last night, 2.20 in the morning. It goes, hey, Ron, hope all is well. We just received a few user emails scolding us and said they found this after watching your video. Now, I don't know how likely that is. Sometimes, you know, people will BS to try to emphasize what they're trying to get at here. I'm a little conflicted on what this email says. You know, maybe some people uh, ordered this specific product and haven't received it yet, and they got concerned when they saw my video and they hit them up. Or maybe some people just straight up went after them and said, what are you guys doing? This is ridiculous. I, I don't know, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so he goes on to say, we also watched the video you just posted. Sorry for the scratches and stains you mentioned in the video. I believe this is a big misunderstanding. Not really a misunderstanding on my part, maybe on theirs. I, I, I don't know, but it's not so much the scratches, like a few little scuffs and scratches. Okay, it's an old controller. I, I get it. Uh, but he goes on to say, all products have uh, many scratches and stains when we recover them from individuals. Scratches are part of the history of the product. Okay, I mean, I, I guess, uh, but stains are not. Like, you would kind of want the most presentable ones you can get, but, you know, whatever. Um, but stains are not. We take every artwork seriously. All products have a strict cleaning process, including ultrasonic cleaning, repeatedly brushed, and finally through the alcohol wipe and dry. This product also experienced these treatments. I'm calling bullshit on that. This, for sure, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he thinks they did that, but he doesn't oversee the process of each individual one. But whoever did this frame, they didn't clean anything. It's quite obvious they didn't. All that gunk and nastiness in there, it wouldn't be in there with just a basic cleaning. So no, I don't believe this was cleaned with that process at all. It just doesn't make sense to me. But okay, let, let's continue on. Uh, you can try to clean with our method. You will see those stains in no way wash off. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, that's why we're going to find out right now. We're going to find out. Um, but we cannot rule out whether there are other better cleaning methods. If there are, we are willing to learn. That's a good thing. You know, if they're willing to learn, that's cool. Um, I do have a few products sitting out here that they didn't use, but I'm going to go through a basic cleaning first. 
And we're gonna take it off of the frame here. Although these scratches are part of every product's history, we will contact users who have bought the Nintendo 64 controller, tell them the cleaning process. If in, they can't accept such a product, we will unconditionally refund or exchange it. Please believe in our sincerity in treating each user and artwork and hope that such misunderstanding will not continue to spread and expand. Looking forward to your reply. Um, this is essentially my reply, but uh, I, I guess maybe I'll reply to him later. Uh, but to continue, like, I don't know if that's like a, a, a way to word, like, please remove the video, but I'm not going to. That's not what I do. And we're actually doing a follow up. So I'm going to take like before and after shots of the controller after I remove it from the uh, frame. But I do have like a little uh, blade here uh, to get this thing off. As you see, there's a lot of glue, hot glue and whatnot. And there's some pegs down there. But I'm hoping I could just slide this through and get everything off. Hopefully anyway. Okay, we got her off. Now I will take some pictures of this so you can see. But already, like, you could see in, in this, they didn't clean anything. Is it possible that they just missed this one? But if you're doing something like this, you're charging that amount of money, how would you miss all that? Like, this is not cleaned. They didn't clean this. But whatever. They said they did, but I'm not believing it. Okay, so I, I wanted to point out, I'm not gonna clean any of the stuff on here, but I mean, there's grime and pretty much everything. Uh, some of it kind of wipes off, like I noticed on here. So I really don't think they did much in the way of cleaning. Like even, yeah, like the start button, there's little stuff in the sides I'm wiping off. The uh, A and B buttons it's wiped off with my finger. Now I probably caught a disease. Let's wipe this thing up. They say they, they use a brush, they use alcohol, an ultrasonic cleaner. I have an ultrasonic cleaner I use for my airbrush for another hobby that I'm involved in, but it doesn't fit this kind of stuff. The buttons would be fine, but let's, uh, let's do a basic wipe down and see what we can accomplish. Brand new uh, microfiber cloth. I'm just gonna get this stuff all over the cloth right there. And we do have uh, some Novus. I love this stuff, uh, scratch remover. I use this on um, like retro consoles for the shells sometimes. Uh, it's, I, I love it. I mean, I don't have any more number one, but I usually use uh, number one and number two. Very rarely have to use number three. But if you're interested in that, I'll put a link down below. But okay, let's just start wiping, y you know. Like if this, already, already, barely even touched it. And I'm just barely soaking into it and it's, it's yeah, come on guys. You did not, <laughs> you did not do any kind of cleaning to this. Cause this stuff just needs a little bit of work to get off. Maybe some spots will be a little more intense, but this is just the crack. And that stuff is coming off. Now we can really get into stuff with the toothbrush and whatnot. But okay, let me wipe this stuff out. Look, look at that. Normally I'm not going to sit here and soak and waste that much alcohol, but I'm just trying to do this as quick as I can. Okay, so just a quick like minute or so, minute or two wipe down with, you know, isopropyl alcohol. Pretty much got all the gunk out of the button holes. Those holes are clean. Um, and pretty much all the gunk, like I put a little bit more elbow grease into it and get it even cleaner. 
on the crevices, but pretty much all the uh, hand cheese is gone, other than like a few spots that kind of the hot glue overlap. But yeah, I mean, it's simple as that. Let's go ahead and, and see if we can do anything about the uh, front here. Maybe a little, you know, goo gone, a uh, little polish maybe, but let's, let's check that out. I'm gonna just kind of soak it for a minute. So I'm gonna spray goo gone on the cloth, a little bit on the front. I don't wanna get this everywhere. But I'm gonna I'm gonna let it like kind of soak for a minute, and then rub it and see if uh, if it's fine. Okay, so I did wipe it down with the Goo Gone. Normally I don't use Goo Gone to clean controllers and stuff, but it can help if you got like stickiness or like adhesive stickers that kind of thing on here. It helped in a few spots, uh, but overall it didn't really make a big difference using Goo Gone on this controller. So I'm gonna quickly move to using a little bit of this Novus uh, number two and see if that helps. And if you use a uh, Novus polish on like video game consoles, just try not to like go over like silk screen printed logos and whatnot. This doesn't have anything like that on it, uh, but you can like slowly fade it and take it off. Um, this can take a little bit of work but I'm already seeing that it, it is helping. And on this, I, I'm not gonna go to number three, the heavy scratch remover, but you could, I just wouldn't go too crazy with it. Uh, there are some heavy scratches in here, but I really don't think uh, it's gonna make much of a difference. But let me clean this up and we'll get some uh, before and after going. Final thoughts. Okay, so there we go. A, a few minute cleaning, wiping. I could have used like magic erasers and a few other things, but a fairly basic, you know, clean job and a little bit of polish scratch remover with uh, Novus. Love this stuff. That really helped the front quite a bit, getting rid of those stains. I think now it looks quite a bit more presentable. This is at minimum what I would have expected on a framed product like this. I mean, it still has some signs of usage, but it's an old controller. I get it, I understand that. But they really should, like for a boutique looking company selling framed controllers and electronics, you know, presenting it as artwork, they really should put, you know, some kind of effort into cleaning this stuff. Now, the other thing I normally would do is use some 303 Aerospace uh, protectant but I don't have any right now, that stuff is magic. Put that on like retro consoles, Sega Saturns, whatever. It makes them look new. Just wipe it over it and it'll, it really helps. I wish I still had some, I gotta order some. But there you go, let me know what you think on my uh, redo. I don't have it mounted on here, I'm just kinda like have it laying there. But yeah, before and after, the before looked garbage. The after, quite a bit more presentable. I could still put a little bit more work into it, but I just wanna do a minimal amount of work, like a few minutes to see what I could accomplish. And this is a hell of a lot better. It shows me that they didn't clean this. Let me know what you think. Bye.